A dog can really track a scent. Certainly knows how to find us. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are picking out the worst of the best. The bottom of the barrel, the dregs, if you will. We are working out the worst party member in every Final Fantasy game. Some entries are objectively bad, affecting the gameplay and being useless. Some are subjectively bad, being annoying characters with grinding personalities. Regardless, they're all the worst. We are leaving Final Fantasy 1 and 2 off this list due to the party's limited personality and Final Fantasy 16 as there is only one party member. Yeah, let's go. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Onion Knight. In a game where character depth takes a backseat to job focus, the Onion Knight stands out as the epitome of Nightmare. Initially handicapped with basic attacks and limited item use, its stats remain pretty damn average during the early levels, making it the least favourable choice. However, once you hit level 50, watch out as its stat gains accelerate to match or surpass other job classes. By level 90, its growth skyrockets to unparalleled levels, boasting the highest stat increments in the game. None of this matters because those early 50 levels are like getting repeatedly stomped on the crotch again and again and again and again on the crotch, you guys. Edward. Imagine only joining the party for a brief section of the game and still managing to grind our gears worse than Kamari and Zell combined. As a bard, Edward from Final Fantasy IV lacks the ability to deal significant damage and even his unique abilities fail to do anything worth writing a song about. Although he undergoes some lovely and poignant story-driven character development, culminating in a boost of confidence, this storyline fails to alleviate the frustration experienced when controlling this wannabe rock star. For all I care, Edward can shove that loot right up his ass. Cryo. When somebody embodies the Mary Sue character archetype, they can become incredibly underwhelming incredibly quickly. Inexplicably competent across all domains, gifted with unique talents or powers, liked or respected by most other characters, unrealistically free of weakness, extremely attractive, innately virtuous, and generally lacking meaningful character flaws, I'd rather shit in my hands and clap than follow this person's tale. Kryle from Final Fantasy V consistently demonstrates wisdom and cautious behavior, rarely acting recklessly and always appearing to possess a clear sense of direction. I know this might sound nitpicky from anyone else's perspective, but I genuinely want to run her over with my car. Gao. Not only does Final Fantasy VI have the biggest roster in all of Final Fantasy, but almost every single character is pretty damn cool. But if we had to pick a worst, it's not actually that hard. Gao, the young boy encountered by Sabin, serves as a representation of the Blue Mage class seen in most Final Fantasy games. The Blue Mage stuff is really cool, and his ability to learn enemy skills, although annoying to manage is actually pretty dope. However, his incomprehensible speech renders his role in this narrative insignificant. Following his initial encounter, he fades into obscurity, a fact that is totally fine by me and probably you. Kate Seth. This was not a hard choice at all. What the hell even is Kate Seth? To begin, the mechanics behind Kate Sif raise several perplexing questions. Controlled by Reeve within Shinra, one wonders about the logistics of this arrangement, given how Kate Sif is always there and never shuts the f up. Despite how notably awful he is in a fight, it's baffling how Reeve manages to fulfill any of his actual duties efficiently, considering for most of his day he's playing this goddamn Scottish cat computer game, and considering Reeve's significant role within Shinra, one might question how he escapes detection. Also, he's not just controlling the cat, he's also controlling the big Moogle thing. I just hate it so much I can't even put it into words. Quistus. <laughs> Quistus initially presents as a promising character in Final Fantasy VIII, showing decent potential, she is in control and boasts significant combat proficiency. Yet, as the game unfolds, it becomes increasingly evident that several other party members surpass her in various aspects. Being the third blue mage featured in the game, it becomes apparent that she's not the optimal choice, which seems to be a recurring problem on this list. Similar to Kamari, Quistus's proficiency lies in her limit break, making her blue magic abilities more annoying to use than they need to be. 
Her personality undergoes a weird change fairly early in the game, turning her proficiency into a thin mask she wears and showing us that behind the mask, it's kind of nothing worth seeing. Queena. Loving Queena feels like a challenge set by the developer. Much like Jar Jar Binks, we must continually ask ourselves, what the f is going on right now? It's a continuous, unfunny joke centered around gluttony that disrupts the flow of the narrative, and the character lacks any redeeming qualities. Even if Queena was enjoyable or compelling, it's still an aesthetic mess that is difficult to look at, with its design starkly contrasting with the more cohesive and thematically consistent character choices seen in Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, and X. In Final Fantasy IX, there seems to be a haphazard approach to character design, as if the creators decided to throw in unconventional characters like a hippo lady and a wolfman without much consideration for coherence. Kamari. I know, I know, some people love Kamari, but just for the next 30 seconds, shut up. Not only does Kamari lack personality, and no, a compelling backstory and goals are not a personality, but his position on the spear grid further diminishes his distinctiveness in gameplay. His character is lame, and his gameplay is lame. It's the devil's duo. Kamari falls behind quickly in skills and stats, requiring considerable effort to catch him up to starting points of other characters on the sphere grid. While this discrepancy can be mitigated with specific special spheres, many players opt to sideline Kamari and concentrate on more promising party members. Kamari never beat Brother Biran, never win! This time, I win. I will win. Van. The issue with Van lies in his lack of relevance to the game's narrative. Despite some initial story connections, his and Pinello's presence adds little significance to the main storyline. In Final Fantasy XII, Ash takes center stage, making Van's aspirations to become a pirate seem trivial in comparison. Oh, you want to be a pirate? I don't care. Shut up for two seconds of your damn life. Hope. Something on your mind? Huh? Oh, I, uh... I was just thinking. With the exception of Saz and Lightning, the characters in Final Fantasy XIII, including both protagonists and antagonists, generally fail to impress, or at least fail to impress me. Please chill in the comments. While arguments could be made for each of them, and I mean it, we could make a separate list, Hope stands out as particularly unbearable. He epitomizes the archetype of a crybaby, which significantly affects his likability, a pick-me boy, if you will. Although in the sequel he undergoes a serious character overhaul, there's no ignoring where he started. You can make Raiden in MGS4 as cool as you want. I'll never forget that cartwheeling cuck in MGS2 till the day I die. Ignis. A dog can really track a scent. Certainly knows how to find us. I'll never do this again, but I wanted to put Prompto in this list. I know, I know, my filthy opinion has been given without warning. That being said, the internet has spoken, and it seems the least loved is our boring and often underwhelming Ignis. He primarily serves as a support character rather than a frontline fighter, focusing on buffing allies and debuffing enemies, which can lead to him feeling less exciting. While Ignis has his own personal storyline and struggles, some players feel that his character development is not as fleshed out as the other main characters like Noctis and Prompto. His tools as a party member are incredibly watered down, although important, it's hard to ignore the difference between a massive sword swinging goliath like Gladdy and a soft-spoken British nerd. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.